My name is Roshna Atmaram. I uh, lead the engineering team for a division called Chip Card and Security at uh, Infineon. So uh, this afternoon, we're here to introduce you to all the variety of diversity initiatives we have at Infineon. And first, I'm going to introduce the company to you. I'm not sure how familiar Infineon is to the audience here. So before I ask for a show of hands, I'm going to play a short video that uh, talks a little bit about our company in terms of philosophy and also a little bit about how we shape. We live in a world that continuously reinvents itself. A world with visionary ideas, inspiring concepts, and smart answers to key questions of our time. How can we preserve our environment? How will our mobility needs be met in the future? How will we communicate? And how can we protect our data? Microelectronics gives answers to these questions. They are the link between the digital and the real world. Semiconductors from Infineon enable technologies to achieve more and consume less while being accessible to everyone. Our values capture this mission. Commitment. Innovation. Partnership. Performance. We make life easier, safer, and greener for a better future. Infineon, part of your life, part of tomorrow. So that's a quick overview. Um, we spoke about microelectronics, and uh, Infineon is primarily uh, a semiconductor company. So a lot of the work we do uh, involve embedded solutions. So the easiest way to introduce you to a product is the debit cards that you use. Uh, they have a little chip on it, if you notice. So a lot of the technology that's inside that chip and actually makes the secure payments is done by Infineon. It's one of the examples. The other one that is uh, quite prominent is in the automotive industry. Uh, we have a lot of pieces that go into the smart cars that you have and electronic vehicles. Um, so our sensors are used pretty much in all the vehicles you see done by Daimler Chrysler, which is your Mercedes line of, uh, of cars as, as a familiar brand. Um, so that's the second business line. The third one is in industrial automation. You saw some pictures about robotics and artificial intelligence uh, modules. So that goes into industrial automation. Uh, this is, broadly speaking, the spread of technology that we work on. So things that you talk about in AI and ML, uh, payments uses a lot of blockchain. Um, all your cards, which we're looking at, modifying in terms of Aadhaar, in terms of Metro cards. Uh, these are products of the future that Infineon will power. Right? So just to give you a broad spectrum of the technology. I'll jump into the presentation, which is on uh, our diversity initiatives. OK. So um, I'm here along with my colleague, uh, who leads our HR uh, and talent marketing, uh, Mr. Ishwar Hegde. So uh, a lot of the policies that are crafted here are done through the HR team. I represent the R&D team, the engineering side of things. Uh, very quickly, looking at diversity at Infineon, we obviously want to create great opportunities uh, for women returning from a break, returning and reintegrating into the workforce with a lot of focus on work-life balance, or as more commonly used today, it's work-life integration. Right? Uh, you can have flexibility of working from home, opportunities to upskill, uh, collaborate, and learn from each other. So a lot of the focus on our diversity program is really about uh, the working conditions, um, women growing their technical knowledge, because a lot of us uh, tend to shy away from technical ladders. Uh, we'd rather move into management. So there's also focus on building leadership. Right? So these are some areas that we look at. A uh, quick walkthrough on what is quite important for us as women. As a working mom, I definitely understand how precious every minute is in the morning to get your kids to the bus and get everything done and then get to work for that 9 o'clock meeting, right? So uh, the opportunities in work-life balance are uh, definitely recognized, and, and it is uh, we encourage through using different tools and taking benefit of the policies that Infineon has, right? Um, we have the work from home, which is available uh, to all employees. 
and particularly for uh, new moms, let's say, or people who have elderly care responsibilities, this is quite a flexible option. Um, another uh, policy I'll talk about a little later is the part-time work, which is a relatively new concept in India. If you look at our counterparts in the US or in Europe, uh, they are very, very comfortable with doing part-time work. So they're okay to work 20 hours a week, which is half a week, right? Uh, whereas here, part-time is not yet widely accepted. Infineon has the part-time policy being crafted, and uh, the policy, I believe, looks something like this, where your part-time schedules are first half of the week or latter half of the week, depending on the business needs and the teams you interact with across sites. So the intent here is to allow the half a week working, and you could utilize the other half potentially for study, for upskilling, or just your personal time, right? So these are the options um, that are currently crafted. You'll also see that there is a latter half of day or first half of day, depending on whether you're supporting a US region, for example, or uh, the East, the Asian countries. So we recognize the needs based on the projects and this flexibility is, is offered. Looking at um, equal opportunities, I'm, I'm not going to read that entire list there, but what is really important to understand is uh, Infineon is an equal opportunity employer. There are no uh, distinctions made even on pay scale. We talk about equal pay and related. Uh, so we have standard slabs which are available. Uh, I was in a workshop earlier this afternoon in the, in the fireside chat. I'm not sure if uh, anybody was joined in that session where um, you were there, right? And there was a lady asking a question about, you know, do I have to take a pay cut uh, after I join back just because I've had a two year break or, or whatever. And the choice between in, in front of us is, do I uh, go for the opportunity and take a lower pay cut or do I g wait for the right opportunity? And that's uh, to a large extent a personal choice, but we help you make that choice easier because there's no disparity here, right? So something for you to consider um, when you're looking to return back to work. Fairness at work, yes, we all hear about difficulties of reintegrating into work. It could be technical challenges. It could be work culture itself. Uh, Infineon as an organization is very employee friendly, right? People focus is extremely high, which is why there's a lot of care taken in the policies that you see drafted here, whether it is related to POSH, whether it is compliance, benefits, and training programs. Right? There is a lot of encouragement which is offered, and, and we are on a drive to grow the diversity within the company. Uh, our R&D center in Bangalore is located in MG Road. Uh, it's not on the periphery of Bangalore uh, at the Ring Road. So for those people who are commuting across the city, <laughs> I can understand the challenge. So we have the benefit of uh, a lot of good connectivity. Right? So, so that's something that you should be aware of as well. Um, Again, just a summary on the diversity charter. Uh, I lead a program at Infineon India called Spurti, um, translated to inspiration. And we, as a group, as a strong community of women, help each other through a journey, not just for reintegration, but for other growth within the organization. Uh, it is, I would say, recently uh, revived with a lot of uh, enthusiasm and, and a new charter. We'll talk a little bit about it in the coming slides. Um, again, a quick summary on the leaves and holiday policies. I think those are uniform. Uh, is there anything you want to add there? Uh, the policies and what about the holidays or benefits on all our extra legal association factor between any, any of the categories? Yeah, so there is no differentiation between uh, even part-time working employees or even full-time employees or any sort of uh, categories as such. So it's completely, pro even for prorated, uh, sorry, part-time uh, Employees, it's on a pro rata basis, so we have, you know, planned all these uh, leaves or benefits or any other activities as such. So, specific to the women-friendly policies, and here maybe we spend a little bit more time because this could be of interest uh, uh, in detail. Uh, flexi time, like we spoke about, is uh, a minimum need of 41 hours per week. Uh, again, you are supported with work from home on, on a need basis and the part-time policy where you'd like to choose it. Uh, so flexi time, definitely. The work from home and part-time are uh, related policies. Um, we would uh, also offer the insurance coverage. I think there is a, a wide spectrum coverage here. 
uh, compares to best in industry, as, as we understand the policy is crafted. Health and wellness, um, there are uh, reimbursements which are available for health and wellness programs. Uh, for those of you who are so inclined uh, to enroll into gym membership or yoga or, or uh, anything that you feel you're interested in. Um, and of course, the maternity policy is as per the, um, uh, I think, best in industry. It's, it's a long-term duration with a flexi additional period that can be discussed with your managers and, uh, and crafted, right? Um, yeah, the, the program called Happy, which offers uh, health checkups. Uh, this is also for self and uh, spouse. It's for self. Yeah? It's for self. Okay. For self. Uh, we have uh, yoga sessions in the office. Uh, at, at a slotted time, so you can plan your day uh, around it or work around your meeting schedules where relevant. Uh, dental, health, defense, self-defense, and, uh, and screening and consultation. So there are, there's a tie-up with multiple uh, institutions where you can uh, avail these benefits. So we have a, uh, a form called Howden, which basically, we, where we have a tie-up. So all these different activities are uh, planned through them. Throughout the year, there are different uh, sessions which keeps happening. Okay. So I'll pause here for some questions if you have any before I jump into this specific program uh, that we call as Jumpstart, uh, which is an initiative driven by the Spurti program specific to reintegrate women. And I'll talk, you a little, talk to you a little bit about the process, uh, the screening process and, and how the handholding happens. Um, so if there are any questions till now, I'll, I'll take those questions. Okay, so we can move on then. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Hi, Hi. I am Priyanka. Actually, talking about myself, I did my MTech in computer science, and then I did my uh, one year uh, lectureship in engineering college. After that, two years of experience in software industry on a Java. So while doing my MTech, my project is my stream. Actually, my MTech stream is in uh, AI and ML. Okay. So right now, uh, I am on a break of two years. Mm -hmm. So I'm st thinking to start it again my career. So means would you recommend me for that uh, jobs? Because uh, see, I don't have any certification or anything about uh, ML. But yeah, I have learned these things and I can upgrade myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, what are the job opportunities then for me? Sure. I think we'll need to understand a little bit more about exactly what you've done. Okay. Um, certainly, see, AI and ML is a very broad yeah, spectrum I, 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 term, I, 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 right? Within AI, understand. you have yeah. NLP, yeah. you have deep learning, there yeah, are so yeah, many yeah, so uh, verticals. So it's so mostly not yeah. in much in AI, but it's in the machine learning ML and artificial yeah. neu neural network, okay. specifically. And my project is also based on an artificial neural network and machine learning concept. Sure. So yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely there would be opportunities to consider. Maybe offline we could connect uh, in terms of getting more of your credentials. Okay. In the ML space, the kind of work that is done, and this is a slight digression for the rest of the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, in ML, it is basically about looking at uh, data analytics and applying ML for patterns that uh, help us make our products better, right? Yeah. So it could be applied in the customer space, it could be applied in the design space. Okay. So that's pretty much where the work is. Uh, and we can maybe connect offline to get some details. Yes. Okay? Thank cool. you. Sure. Thanks, Priyanka. So any other questions? Or I could, yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> sure. uh, I wanted to understand the part-time uh, policy that you talked about. It seems like a very interesting initiative. Uh, I haven't really heard many of them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, could you just uh, elaborate a little bit more for higher learning and understanding? Sure. Is this for your existing employees? Like, um, is this to have to do with your sabbatical? Or, or is this for uh, many women uh, who are here who are looking at restarting? Is this like uh, uh, an option that one can look at? Yes. So it, it's not um, a sabbatical in its traditional sense. Um, the, the sabbatical is a continuous period of absence, at, at least as the policy goes, right? So it allows you to take off, do a course, or maybe travel with your spouse or whatever and, and come back. Um, but this is not a sabbatical. This is truly part-time in the sense if you're a new mom, for example, you want uh, the, the first day to be uh, free and you can kind of work in the afternoons, 
right? So that is the benefit of this policy. It's specifically for people like that. It could also be for people who want to pursue um, a, a learning program on your own, uh, not necessarily from the organization driven. Maybe you're passionate about photography. You can opt as an individual to work part-time and invest in your ho uh, 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 hobby of your choice part-time. So the intent is here in some ways to support women both on their technical careers as well as their personal life. Uh, so I hope it's clear how it's different from a sabbatical. Sure. Yeah? Uh, and this is uh, for, a, I'll come to you, ma'am. This is uh, typically offered for a period of two years uh, as, as, as a limit to, to help our working moms tide over that period where we generally tend to see women leave, right? Um, uh, childbirth is a life event. It's important to each of us. It's a phase we want to enjoy. And, and so hopefully this facility allows for that. So that's the spirit behind it. This is yep. applicable for both the existing employees who are there in the organization as well as for restarting the career of people. Yeah, for new joinees as well. Yeah. Not purely diversity. This is also applicable to guys. If, if a parent who is a new dad would like to support his family through a part-time role, uh, we are allowing it. So it's not that just the women have to, you know, kind of break their career down. Uh, we have uh, a lot of gentlemen who do support. Uh, yes. <laughs> We do, <laughs> and that's why we say our, our culture is quite inclusive. Um, so yes, it's, it's, it's encouraging our uh, uh, guys in the organization as well, because some of them do want to pursue subjects out of business domain, right, for whatever interest, and so they're uh, willing to make this adjustment. So the managers are invested, the management is invested. I'm part of the management team that approves these policies, so we are invested in allowing our employees to have this flexibility. It's prorated based on the permanent role, whatever the compensation, what we would give. So based on that, based on the number of hours and all those things, so that gets prorated. Right. And what about the, um, the whole application cycle? Uh, do, do they do they the application yes. Good? Yes. Good. Because you're still performing for the organization. You're contributing to business outcomes. Um, it uh, is judicious when it comes to people management roles because if you're not always around for your team or not accessible to your team, that can be impactful. Um, so it's judicious in those cases. But as long as you're in a technology role contributing to business outcomes, yes, those, those targets definitely apply. Yeah. So there's unfortunately... Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Actually, it is a new policy which we have started uh, uh, this year. So not completely uh, on where like there are too many people as such. Yeah. So it's a new policy. Like I said, the, the Spurti initiative is being revived. This is one of the tracks um, where we want to offer help uh, or at least support women in the organization. Because we did in our homework, it looked like women that are facing these life events and choices tend to just fall back on, you know, staying at home as the easiest option. So here's something for you to consider as an alternative, right? It's not that, I mean, there are already employees who are working in this mode, but that is in you know, bits and pieces, not as, yeah. yeah, it was not a uniform policy or something, so which is where we thought of coming up with this, yeah. coming up with this talk. True, so I think a lot of organizations are considering it. We've gone ahead and rolled it out. So it's available for employees to, to yes ma'am. No worries. So I wanted to understand if you have work from home Right. So work from home is a mutual agreement uh, within your uh, teams and depending on the role you play within the team. There are certain roles where work from home is not encouraged uh, for obvious reasons of contribution and um, you know, the way the teamwork is going to uh, have outcome or, or results. But by and large, work from home is a policy which is supported. Um, it's typically maybe one or two days a week. Not at the moment. We could look at that option for certain roles, uh, which may be non-technical. And the reason I say this is, um, particularly the division that I lead, which is called chip card and security, we're paranoid about security, right? So when you're working from home, there is no way for me to ensure that no one on Facebook is clicking a selfie with something of our documentation in the background. 
okay? And sometimes kids are playful with their phones, they do stuff, and yeah, sometimes they're on your laptop, sometimes they're on your iPad. Uh, so security for us is, is quite critical in our business, right? And so for that reason, we don't encourage all roles to work from home. It could be on need basis for a certain period, a limited period, it could be considered. Yeah. But not even in, in, in her department also, there is a possibility. So only, uh, yeah, it might not be for a longer duration as such. Yeah. That's purely because of the security reasons, because there are a lot of confidential data which gets managed by her team, global data, so which is where we need to have her. So, but otherwise, as an organization, so if there is always a guideline where two days in a week you can work from home, but it has to be working from home, where uh, you can seek your approval from your manager, clarify what you would be doing at home, and you can plan it accordingly. So how do you track this? Uh, like, will, it, will it be an agreement or this is the kind of uh, Yeah, so you can discuss with your manager where what all activities you would be doing can conclude on that so maybe you can summarize it by end of the day or whatsoever the mean so that that is between the manager and the in respective uh, employee as such yeah so actually there are supporting um, uh, policies for example the internet connection you use at home uh, there are reimbursements which are possible uh, phone connection is part of your flexible uh, pay so you can provide the bills for tax uh, ex tax exemption um, so there are supporting policies, although they are not listed here, they will ensure that you get at least some kind of minor benefits even though you are working from home. It's, it's basically an enabler, right? We are not calling out all the policies here, just for you to understand. Um, the Jumpstart program is one of the tracks done by the program called Spurti. And it is focused at reintegrating women into the workforce. And that's one of the reasons we are here, uh, associated with Jobs for Her, as a platform to reach out and, and get in touch with women who are looking for these opportunities, right? Uh, the way the program works is quite simple. Um, we do have opportunities which are published. They are on the Jobs for Her portal. Uh, they are also available with, uh, with Ishwar as a, as a HR uh, uh, talent manager. And um, we can have offline discussions as well. So based on your interest levels, uh, I've introduced you to the technology, a little bit about the products that we do. Uh, based on your interest levels, uh, the applications uh, we would welcome uh, so that we can screen and provide some feedback to you. Uh, based on shortlisting, the program allows for an onboarding as an internship program, which is for six months, right? The six months gives you exposure based on your profile to one of the business lines that I spoke about where it could be relevant uh, for automotive, it is probably relevant for payments and government for the line that I lead, and also for power management. So those of you who have an electronics background uh, could also find fitment in our power electronics division, okay? So those opportunities are already published on the Jobs for Her portal. There are affiliate roles, which are not core engineering. For example, uh, technical writing, right? It is something quite conducive to people who would like to do a part-time work or a low load kind of uh, role, right? So technical writing on documentation is another role that I am for my division also personally looking at. So we want to encourage also the peripheral roles because we believe when you're reintegrating, something which allows you to focus on reintegration as well as give you some technical support is a good way to get started again. And as you get more confident, as you get more comfortable, we can definitely enhance the role to look at more core technical involvement, right? So there's a, there's a, this six months is intended for you to focus on reintegrating, looking at cross-skilling or upskilling yourself, uh, and just coming back into the corporate workforce. There is a lot of inhibition that I've seen in, in women that when they come back, they're awfully quiet because they feel either lack of confidence or I have no clue what these people are talking about. Right? That's a lot of inhibition that we go through. And I, I've seen this personally through friends of mine. I personally have not taken a break, so I can't say I understand it 100%, but I've seen my friends and, and colleagues struggle through a certain phase. So it's more of uh, the understanding that I have from their experiences, but I, I definitely think that uh, a short-term view where you can focus on reintegration, try and find yourself again, right? What it is you want to do. I think that's really critical, and we're here to handhold that. Spurti is a program, like I said, is, is the diversity initiative, and so there are all our women at um, 
and Finney and India part of this program, uh, we will support you by being a buddy to you, right? Find your way around the organization. How do you maneuver? What policies you should take leverage of? Uh, what conversations you can have with your manager to, to ensure that, because they, like I said, since you're coming back, there's a lot of inhibition that if I say this to my manager, I want to leave early, he's going to think, I'm, again, I'm slacking off, right? I've got this opportunity and this guy thinks, again, I'm running away home. So constructive discussions with your team. Um, there is some undercurrents always saying that, oh, she always leaves early. Just because she's got a kid, she's always leaving early, right? There are statements that you hear in, in the organization. So Spurti also will help you through coaching that. So how do you deal with that, right? So I think it's, it's about being a buddy, not mentorship really, but it is about being a friend, being a buddy, hand holding you through this integration phase. And along the lines, you will also have technical exposure. At the end of the six month uh, term, uh, the, the tenure of the internship, uh, there are opportunities for onboarding with us as a full time, provided of course we have the relevant roles and partly also on your contributions and, and uh, investment in performing, right? So with that as an opportunity, um, the pro internship closes and you're also given a certification if for whatever reasons we can't absorb the interns, we will also offer a recommendation and a, a certification that allows you to showcase your work at other opportunities. Uh, on a personal network, there are a lot of uh, groups and, and organizations that I personally interlink with um, kind of unofficially consult with them to provide opportunities to women who are interested in coming back to work, right? So if it is not at Infineon, it could be at one of our affiliate companies where we could have a conversation, introduce you at least to an opportunity, and then it's up to you to take it forward. But we hope that the Jumpstart program, once concluded, will bring you a lot more confidence. Uh, it will make you comfortable to come back into the corporate environment and definitely you will have a lot more technical uh, content, technical meat to discuss in subsequent opportunities. So this is the crux of the Jumpstart program. So what's the duration of that? It's a six-month internship. And starts when? I mean, ideally, you have to start yes. like Correct. So we are uh, initiating um, the first cohort. I would expect um, we, would, we can start maybe around October, November time, right? So the whole point of being present at Jobs for Her today is also to encourage and, and the applications uh, for the positions which have been published. And uh, I, in my team, uh, as a management member, we have commitment for each of, from each of the management directors to, to absorb these interns, right? So uh, I will be taking two interns. My peers will each be taking one or two, depending on their needs, depending on the size of the team they lead. Um, so the technical writer I spoke about was for my specific team uh, where I'm looking to support multiple product lines with evolved documentation. Uh, we're also looking at opportunities of different forms of conveying customer data, right? So a creative approach, maybe you do a help video, you do an unboxing video, you could have a live channel, you could have chatbots, spoke about uh, ML and AI, you can have intelligent bots which can be trained. Uh, integrated into our customer support systems, analytics on what are the pain points. So there are a lot of opportunities there. Um, so personally, that's what that's what I'm looking at. Yes, ma'am. It's purely competence driven. So there is no age factor. I think we should say age is just a number, right? Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> The, the quip that I normally hear and use, which I heard from someone else, was sometimes people ask you, right, what's your age? If it's a guy asking, you can tell him it's definitely less than your waist size. <laughs> so <laughs> at least here in India, it works. So <laughs> something you should keep in mind. But yes, ma'am, welcome. No problem at all. So we have in this book, uh, it's on the portal. Yeah, uh, so it's available in... Uh, online in Jobs for Her, and also you can log on to our career site, infineon.com, so where all the positions you can see. So an internship, right? Yes, this is the six-month internship. To start with, because we want you to reintegrate along the right. So are there the only technical internship or non-technical, like the HR, the training and demo? I'm aware of the technical jobs, oh. ma'am, but Ishwar can Yeah, so the collaborate. HR and administrative activities would be based on the needs, so that would come up on Later on? Yeah. Okay. So currently it's technical. Software development as well? 
Yes. So what I meant to say is any administrative or support function activities like HR, finance, and all, so that would be based on the need. So we would come up. Correct. Not might not be there throughout the year. As Business such. relevance. Sales as of now, so we have looked at the, that is a full time job which was available. Yeah, full -time as well. yeah. So we can like apply to yes, that. yes, definitely. There you is can, absolutely, absolutely no differentiation in terms of candidature as such for any positions what we look at. You, uh, if you are on a break and therefore applying, you can also make it known in the application because it, it reaches the uh, the right teams and they will channel you through. If if you are looking at Jumpstart as the internship, uh, it can be channeled that way. So in internship, also sales and BD roles are there. Right now, no. I mean, at the moment, not that we are yeah. not planned as such, but what I meant to say is that's again based on the need. Yeah. So in so, R and D functions, we have majorly identified the roles. Okay. But in sales or support functions, so we had, that would be based on the need as such. Yeah. Um, so if you are interested, you can share your CV, so then we can plan it accordingly. Is the internship based on? Yes. It is. It is. There is a stipend which is attached. Uh, the specifics are part of the policy, which we don't normally divulge. Uh, not in an open forum, but uh, you can always uh, in inquire offline. Yeah. So just to answer your uh, question, the cohort we are looking at for Jumpstart is tied into the newness of the part-time policy. So we are also trying to get feedback from audience like this on which one is of more value, right? Uh, do I just need those six months to reintegrate, find my place, and, th and then move on? Or I'm more comfortable jumping back straight away into a part-time role, right? It could also be a six months of the internship followed by a part-time role. So this, is, this will help us understand whether our policies are beneficial to you, or maybe we tweak it a little bit to kind of cater to things like this. The easiest target for us being an R&D center in Bangalore are engineering positions. Uh, sales and marketing does exist, but as you can imagine, it's a very small team, right? As compared to the engineering population, which is almost uh, four, four, 500 people. Sales is about 60 people. So that's the reason you'll see limited options, but it will be there. Yes, ma'am. Full time, right? Yes. For the sales? Yes. Okay. It so is there, there's, ma'am. There's the a part time availability for sales? For sales as a policy, yes. Yes. The positions right now are not there. Okay. So uh, as a policy, yes. It, it, it does not distinguish between the engineering and the non-engineering roles. It's, it's a common policy for all employees. Oh. Okay. Uh, but in terms of availability of positions today, we don't have, uh, at least I'm not aware. Again, I'm from the R&D, so maybe okay. Ishwar has details. In engineering, do you have multiple Yes, we do. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about the business lines. Uh, we started with that, perhaps. I'm not sure if you were there from the beginning. Uh, you were? OK. So one of the business lines we spoke about is automotive. And automotive has a software division and a hardware uh, a vertical, which is called post-silicon validation. And that focuses primarily on safety and security of automotive components. So that's what I would understand to be as quality assurance. We also have a second pure function of quality management, which is processes, supporting processes, audits. Say what? Yes, we do have opportunities yes, in that. Yes, we do. We do. All the main R&D functions or quality or all those areas we have, even sales, we have op opportunities as a you know, full-time job. But yeah, part-time in uh, support function, it could be need-based. Sometimes we might not have thought about, but in case if you are interested, do get in touch with us so that we can plan for it. Yeah. So Jobs for Her Portal has our contact. Uh, if you're interested in carrying home some business cards, I have a few. I'm sure Ishwar has. Um, so I will send it out. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we spoke about Spurti. I'm just going to quickly recap here. Uh, we discussed quite a bit of it. Uh, as a mission, we look at growing our women into leadership roles. That's something that is um, unfortunately lacking in the center that I work in. So surprisingly, I'm only six months old in Infineon. But yeah, so this is aspirational for us. Uh, technical development and mentoring. This is not the body thing that I spoke about earlier. Technical development is really about offering you training programs 
um, both at uh, the likes of BITS, uh, which one? Ishwar, BITS Pilani. BITS Pilani. Yeah, so uh, postgraduate programs at BITS Pilani uh, is an uh, opportunity, and also internal technical programs. We also have an active university relationship program where uh, members of the engineering teams work with students to develop, let's say, prototypes or some proof of concept. So these are students that are running projects. They are typically MTech or IIT students, and our employees can collaborate with them to build applications or some solutions that they are trying to work on. Uh, we also offer the opportunity of guest lectures, so technical people on the technical plane can go and, as a subject matter expert, go and talk at these universities on topics of interest, right? So that's the technical development part. As an uh, employee of Infineon, so one has an opportunity to go for any sort of higher studies depending on their in interest as well as business line interest. There is no restriction for any specific college or institute or university as such. Could be technical, could be non-technical. We'll take the details offline, but it's an option for technical uh, uh, degree enhancement. Um, CSR activities, not our primary focus for this charter because it's really about developing women for technical and management, but nonetheless it comes across in some of the initiatives that we do. Um, the orange box is why we are here, encouraging women to get back to the workforce and our charter to increase diversity at uh, IFIN is uh, Infineon India. A quick detail onto the specifics of the charter under the three verticals we run. There are three tracks. Are we done? Okay, so I have five minutes more. Um, the three verticals and calling out Jumpstart program as the specific. Uh, so just some quick line items there. I think we spoke a little bit about some of them. Uh, things that we probably didn't cover is uh, personal brand building, right? How do you build visibility in an organization? So the hand-holding we spoke about in six months hopefully prepares you on how to showcase. There are some inherent uh, hesitations we have uh, just standing up in front of an audience to talk, right? Just talk about something you're comfortable. So personal brand building, building visibility. It'll apply to you no matter which organization you're at. If we can help coach you through overcome that, I think it's, it's a good, good uh, step ahead. Uh, create networking opportunities within the organization and industry. So forums uh, like Jumpstart is a good one. NASCOM is the other. And Grace Hopper is something that we are involved in. But it's not limited to that. There are multiple forums uh, that we get to attend as, as technical delegates, as management delegates. And if you're comfortable, you can even present a topic of your interest. So that, I think, is great for networking. And it's something that women, women tend to shy away from, doesn't come naturally but definitely a value add, right? So we'll help you there. Um, the, the others are pretty much operational. Uh, knowing your strengths is also something that are, there are specific programs which are run on doing a personal strength uh, analysis, let's say, right? Or a, or a style of influence or a style of leadership. There are programs that can help us find our strengths. Um, as a part of this charter, we also encourage one of the teams, uh, the, the track that's handling the sustenance, to get involved in finance. Uh, something that us as engineers don't tend to do, but then we want to be managers down the line, and then suddenly we have a budget to deal with, and things are going all over the place, right? So a little bit about understanding how finance systems in the corporate world works. What are those categories? Why do you need STPI rules, right? A little bit of the legalities. It's knowledge for you. Whether you use it in your day-to-day -day job is secondary, but knowing it doesn't hurt, right? So a little bit about that. Um, so this is essentially how we uh, have structured this Purti program, which is the key initiative. Jumpstart, I, I walked you through this. Uh, quick stats in terms of where we stand in India, uh, given by the World Bank on the percentage of women in the labor force participation. You can see it's relatively low, um, progressively higher towards uh, Western world, but yeah, I think we have opportunity to improve. Um, similarly, the technology landscape, uh, I think tech growing women architects is a huge challenge, right? At least coming from that world, it's really difficult to get somebody to architect a product. And we fall off this, this journey we are on the moment something tough comes up. Right? So it's, it's also about encouraging you to build that technical backbone to, to steer through those opportunities. Um, just 
just a branding image, and uh, the framework we spoke about, how HR will help you. Um, so they are basically our source of all the profiles. Um, Spurti, we interact with you to understand your interest um, and, and your business-related fitment to the roles we have. Uh, definitely you have a buddy who can help you. And uh, IFIN, this is essentially the management involvement and, and commitment that we have.